everyone. Can you all say hi? Hi. Hi. What What is our baking show called? Uh, uh, pajamas baking. Pajamas and baking because pajamas we're all in quarantine, and so we're still in our jammies. So today we're making something super special. What are we making? Holla. Holla. Okay, so we're gonna start that off right now. And the first thing you're gonna need is half a cup of warm water. Then in here, I have, I have, I have, I have half a teaspoon of sugar. I have uh, rapid rise yeast and active dry yeast. One package of each. <laughs> okay. Guys. Okay. Way to go. <laughs> so we're gonna stir oh, this. We're gonna stir it up. Stir it up. Can't, can't bake for Shabbat without a little Bob Marley. So this is going to be our rising agent, and we're just gonna set this to the side for a bit, and hopefully it'll rise. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're gonna need to do is we are going to add into our bowl here. This is a bread whisk, if anyone is wondering. You can use a regular head whisk or a wooden spoon. This is just what I like to use. I need eggs. Ella, can you put the eggs in the bowl for me? All at the same time. All at the same time. So it's going to be two eggs. And Leora, can you help me put in can our... Can we help put in both? Sure. Our half cup sugar. We're also going to put in a teaspoon of salt. The next thing we're going to do is um, I'm putting a sixth of a cup of oil in. I use avocado oil, um, but vegetable oil or anything else like that is fine. And so here's a trick I like I do as well is after this, I put into the same container the oil was in, I put a sixth of a cup of honey, and this way it doesn't stick to the um, measuring cup. And that's for my mom, so thank you, mom. <laughs> okay guys, who wants to help me pour? Me. I'm gonna go in and I like to like crack the eggs a little bit just to help get it going. By the way, for those of you watching, that's our COVID-19 schedule in the background. <laughs> Next thing that we're gonna end up adding is a cup of bread flour. Yeah. Now, if you don't have bread flour at home, you can use all purpose, it's fine. I'm, I'm working off of a very old recipe that says bread flour, so I use bread flour. <laughs> I wanna take a side note. So if you can see, this is starting to rise. And I like to get it to rise to about the point of the one cup mark. And when so, it reaches that point, I usually add it into my mixture. It's really hands. hard to mix now, Mommy. Yeah, that's because Mommy forgot we also needed an additional cup of, or additional half a cup of warm water. Can you help me pour that in? Before you add in your yeast, your rising agent, this is about the consistency you're looking for. Okay, now girls, we're gonna add in our yeast. It's about at that one cup line. Hi, Elf. Yep. Hi, Elf. Okay. This makes the hollow rise. So at this point, you don't wanna stir it too vigorously. I like to keep some of the bubbles going to make sure it's still rising. And then after we're done stirring, okay, let's let Elf turn. We're gonna add in two more cups of the bread flour. It's gonna be kind of, it's, at this point, it's getting to be thicker and kind of, it's, it's gonna be very, it's, this is a very sticky dough, just FYI. So we'll keep going. So at this point, I'm gonna add in my next cup. And then we're gonna like dough it out with this. Roll it, it's okay, it's okay. Roll, roll it. Okay. And then we're gonna paint it. Let's let, it's gonna go hard right now. You'll catch those steps in a little while. <laughs> At this point, it's gonna be a little harder to stir. This is about the texture I'm working with right now. Okay, and after here is, I'm not gonna add any more flour into the bowl here. I'm actually going to flour my surface that I'm working on. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna spread it like this Why? to help keep the hollow from sticking to the table. We're gonna go like this and I'm gonna spread it all around. Okay, next we are going to do some starting the poured out process. Okay, are we gonna touch that though? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're about to start the process called kneading. And Ella, 
Do you know what kneading is? Yeah. So you also want to really vigorously put flour all over this lump of dough to help get it where you need it to be. We will be kneading this for 10 minutes, so you might get a little tired. Uh, but here's what we do. We start it off, I like to kind of punch it like this. Okay. Well, it's already sticking to me. So I like to punch it, and then I pull it. It's so sticky. And I keep pulling it, so I'm gonna just kind of roll it like this, and then I bring it back this way, and then I punch again. This is also a way to get out your aggression if you're maybe been okay. home with your kids for a week now. <laughs> Another way you can knead dough, you can just go like this, and that's another way to do it. It's way messier though, so. A few moments later. So we're getting closer to the point of being done kneading. We're not done yet, but if you wanna come see, it's more, it's getting more into like a manageable ball and not just like a lump of dough. So in a couple minutes, we'll be at the finished process. So now girls, if you want to, we're just gonna kinda of do this. I like to do this to help shape it into a ball. Okay, so here is my finished product, if you want to take a look at it. Um, my finished product is So this is the texture I like to work with. Now, I'm not a master bread maker, but this is what I got. So after we're done with that, we are going to get a clean bowl. I like to spray it with some oil, and then um, let, I'll put this in, cover it with a warm towel, and we will let it rise for an hour. We will see you in a little bit. Welcome back to Cooking with the Waldmans. The girls got distracted and are watching Frozen now. Let it go! Hi guys, welcome back. Hi guys, welcome back. We're on to part two. So I, a couple minutes ago, I got my dough that was rising. I pulled it out. And actually, here's a little hint for today. It's rainy and cold, so it's not a good day to help things rise. So what I do is I stick my dough in a bowl, I put it with a wet cloth, I put it in the oven, and then at the same time, I put steaming water in a bowl below it, and that will help, the heat and the steam will help it rise. And so I do that for about an hour, and that worked really well. Okay, so now I've already taken it, and I've, we're gonna make two loaves of Paula. So I've already taken everything out and divided it into equal parts. Um, <laughs> so this will be one loaf of Paula, and this will be the other. Um, Right now they just look like cookies. I can't, remember, I can't remember what this is called, but this is what I use to uh, cut the dough. You can use a kitchen knife, not a big deal. A straight I, metal sharpie thingy. That, that's the technical term I'm pretty sure. And then I also have a digital kitchen scale that I use to um, weigh everything out. You don't have to be that specific about it. My mother was always very specific, so I am too. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm actually gonna put a little bit of oil on my girl's hands. Okay. <laughs> so you just you wanna show the camera, Leora? We'll see your hands. Oily hands. Ew. Ew. Yeah. You wanna okay. do it too, Ella? You wanna show me your hands? Ew. Okay, so I'm gonna give one ball of dough to each child. Okay, and Ellie, how about you get that one? I'm gonna move some of these out of your way too. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I like to take it and I rub it, I roll it between my hands like this. And I kind of squeeze it a little bit, get any air pockets out. <laughs> and um, then we get it going. And then when I'm kind of like happy with it, that's when I start rolling it on the table. Like this to get it nice and long. And so we can stretch, stretch things as we go to make it more uniform, not a big deal. Okay, so if this happens, like she was pointing out to me that, oh no, this part got a little bit too thin. So all I do is I kind of just squeeze it back together and then I'll just roll with it. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to line them up. So what you're going to do is you're going to put all six strands, and that's how many you should have, next to each other. So we're doing a six-stranded braid here. So like I said, we have them here and they're cinched at the top. Notice 
this part never looks as good, so I just kind of like <laughs> fold it under and you're like, huh, everything's better. Oh no one God. knows. <laughs> <laughs> here and I'm just gonna squish it because all the pieces are kind of uneven which happens when you have three different people doing your strips. So guys what I like to use these are my favorite kind of baking pans they're the ones that are textured and then I just put a piece of piece of parchment paper there and I'm gonna let this holla sit or I'm gonna put it back and let it rise for another hour so this is time consuming so just enough time to watch frozen and get into frozen too. Hey guys, okay, so I have my oven set at 350 and I'm gonna put my loaves in. Um, so these will bake for about five to 10 minutes and then I will switch them onto the opposite rack that they're on and then we will do the same thing for another five to 10 minutes and, and then we will blaze it. Okay guys, we're about to glaze our hollas and we're gonna start with, if you look in here, this is our egg wash, which is one egg and about a teaspoon of water and you basically scramble it until you get about this texture. So girls, what are you gonna do to the holla? Hey. Hey. Okay, so at this point we are going to bake them for about 5 to 10 minutes at 350 and then we'll be done. Wow. 